got about us? Yeah, Gina's right. We must check the game. Yes! What is that enemy just now? What's your problem? Let's go! Hello, is this the police? Are you blind? Hey. You can't see me? You're the one who bumped into me, right? What's huh? your problem, dude? Hey, my problem is it. Thank you for calling, sir. Sir, we have received multiple calls informing us of fights in the vicinity of Tanjo Paga Road. Our officers are on the way now. Up room to Alpha 3 Romeo 2. Roger, send over. Proceed to Pacific Fantasy KTV at Tanjo Paga. There's been another fight. Premier suspects involved. Sending you the exact location now. Over. Roger, Alpha 3 Romeo 2. Acknowledge. Book me proceeding from Craig Road. Over. The attack happened about 20 minutes ago. A group of men entered the park and attacked the two victims. So the victims were badly injured and they were conveyed to the hospital. So this gentleman over here is the owner of the park. Whereas two ladies over there are the witnesses. Okay, thank you. Senior Investigation Officer Halimi. Mr. T, can you tell me about the fight? I wasn't here. Where were you? In the toilet. By the time I came out, the men already there. My customers were lying on the floor, all bloody. So do you know the victims? They are regulars. Okay, thank you, Mr. T. You both were here when the assault took place. Can you tell me what happened? We were serving drinks when two guys came in and started punching our customers. Then five other guys came in and they started beating everyone up. So you mean there's seven guys all together? Yes. Can you describe them? It was quite dark. I couldn't really see them properly. Me too. Did the two victims talk to the seven men earlier? I don't know. I've never seen that group before. How about you? No, I don't think I've ever seen them here. Mr. Tay, can I have a look at the CCTV footage? Okay, thank you, Mr. Tay. The first two guys who entered the pub I know them, Jackie and Kasim. They are both persons of interest. They are known to frequent the Tajobaga area. From the second group, I recognize the big one. He's a Harun. Let's move on to the next location. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight. Rick, activate the crime scene. Yes, sir. Sir, there were two victims. One of them is a waiter from Jangba, and the other was Eugene Lo. When we arrived, Eugene was already on the ground bleeding. The waiter was a few meters away. Both victims have been sent to the hospital. The witness said she saw four aggressors. How did the witness know the victims? She said she's a friend of Eugene's. Her name is Chen Hui En. Senior Investigation Officer, help me. Can you tell me what happened? This group of men were walking down the road. Then they bumped into Eugene and started shouting at him. He didn't do anything, but they beat him up anyway. Do Eugene and you know them? No, not at all. Then what did you do? The four of them were hitting Eugene. So I ran to Changba and asked the waiter there to help me. He came and asked them to stop, but they didn't care. And then they started hitting the poor guy too. 
What did the four men look like? They were Malay. Three of them looked quite young. The fourth one, maybe 30 years old, 35 years old. Do you see where they came from? From that direction. Do you recognize anyone here? That one. He was one of the four. How about this one? Anyone? This one, this one, and this one. So that's four out of seven accounted for. The other three men must have left the group after leaving outside Domba and have gone elsewhere. Rick, get the footage from the pool cam over there. See if you got anything. Me and Mark are going to head down to the last location, sir. So you're the operations manager of Pacific Fantasy KTV? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Three men went to the pub and then came to this uh, back alley for a smoke. Then they got into a fight with one of my regular runner. Are you able to describe the three of them? They were all Malay. Two of them were average looking, but one of them was quite big and tall. Big and tall? Can you recognize anyone here? This tall one. This guy. And this one. Thanks. Do you have any CCTV camera here? Sure. Just let me put it up for you. Thank you. It looks like our three cases are connected. Okay, guys, I managed to get the medical report of Eugene Lo. He's the one who got attacked outside Changba, right? Yes. Besides multiple facial fractures, the victim also suffered damages to his facial nerves. The injuries look like they were the result of simultaneous blows from several angles, suggesting that there were multiple attackers involved. Speaking of the attack, take a look at the footage from the pole camp outside Changba. Unfortunately, the pole camp only caught the attack on the waiter. I managed to speak to the waiter, Zhi Zhong, as well as Eugene. Both victims deny knowing the four suspects who attacked them. Ahmad, any updates? We have positively identified Jackie, Izaharul and Kasim. I've got a couple of officers checking out their registered addresses. Okay, good. Let's gather our men for pre-op briefing. Yes, sir. Okay, guys, listen up. These seven suspects were involved in a series of assault cases that took place within a span of 15 minutes in Tanjung Baga area. The first one was at Upside Down Park, where two victims suffered from bruises and swellings on their heads and bodies. The second assault was at Changba. It was so severe until one of the victims was warded in the ICU. And the third one was in the back alley of Pacific Fantasy KTV. Rick, anything from your side? We have positively ID'd three of them. They are mainly Muhammad Hasli bin Abdul Hamid, also known as Jackie, Isa Haru Fidaus bin Abdul Rahim, and Muhammad Kasim bin Abdul Rao. Preliminary checks show that both Isa Haru and Kasim have not been back to their registered addresses. But we will continue to surveil the residences while issuing a police gazette for the pair. Jackie is currently being observed in his registered address, and we know that these two other suspects are in his home with him. That's all for me, sir. Okay, guys. Here's the action plan. Grace, you'll guard the leaf landing on the ground floor. Rick, you'll guard the leaf landing on Jackie's floor in case the suspect try to escape using the leaf. Tim and Lucas, you both are going to be covering the staircases. The rest of you will be with me. We'll ambush Jackie's place and arrest the suspects. All clear? Yes, sir. sir. All units stand by. We are going in. Roger, Roger. and knowledge. Mama Asli, be Abdul Hamid. Yeah, why? Senior investigation officer, help me. You are under arrest for writing. Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Don't struggle! Don't move! Don't struggle! Who are all these men? 
That's Kasim, Zaf, Zahrul, Jidan, Hasbi. How about him? I don't know him. You went out with someone you don't know? Zahrul and Kasim know him. Where were you that night? You were upside down pub. Before that? You were another pub. Eleven Hearts. So tell me, what happened that night at Eleven Hearts? Jidan's sister is Jackie's girlfriend and she came down to the pub that night. She was upset with Jackie and they had a fight. Jidan tried to calm his sister down but she was too angry. She left and Jackie followed her out. My girlfriend was crazy angry. She wouldn't even listen to anything I said. Wait, 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 no. It's not what you think. No, I don't. No, it's not what you think. Then this guy walked past. The way he looked at us. Never see boyfriend and girlfriend fight before, is it? No. <laughs> no respect. Get on my his own business, is it? Dare to stare at me some more. Ooh. I must teach him a lesson. You don't even know where he is. I know. Got your back, bro. What happened after the two of them left? We couldn't let them go by themselves, right? So we followed them. By the time we got there, the guy was already being bashed up. So we just joined in. Where did you go after that? We didn't want to go back to Eleven Hearts. So we went to look for another place. Me and some of the guys, we wanted to catch the football match. But the other guys wanted to go somewhere else. So, we split up. We went to look for a place showing life matches. <laughs> Oi! You cannot see people walking, is it? Sorry lah. Hey, you dare walk away! Stop! Stop! What are you doing? What? After that, Jida and Zaf came over my place to crash. What about Hasbi? I think he went home. I got Hasbi's contact from Jackie's phone and checked the telcos. His full name is Mohd Hasbi bin Fadila. But when we went down to his registered address, we found that he only comes home sometimes. There is no regular pattern. We'll canvas the place where he lives. Let's see if we can find any lead. Suspects spotted the chalk floor. Stand by. Excuse me, are you Mama Hasbi bin Padilla? Ah, uh, yeah. Senior Investigation Officer Halimi. You're under arrest for raping. Rick, cuff him. Sir, wait, wait, wait. I can, I can, I can explain. Hello? Yes. Izaru is back at his registered address? Got it. Keep eyes on him. We're heading over now. Civilian seems as Izaru just got back home. Okay, let's go. We have arrested five of the seven suspects already. But the worst part is... We don't even know who the last suspect is. According to Jackie, he is Izaharu and Kasim's friend. How about him? I don't know him. You went out with someone you don't know? Izaharu and Kasim know him. No luck? Hasbi doesn't know the last suspect. Izaharu knows. But he won't talk. All I can get out of him was the last suspect nickname, Hawkins. What about Iza Haru's phone? Maybe it has Hawkins' number? I went through it. No numbers, no messages. They even checked the deleted numbers and messages. Then, how do they know each other? 
Izarul said that he, Kasim and Hakim sometimes hang out together. We had several complaints on Kasim. I pulled out Izar Harul's profile and found several complaints filed against him too. Rick, Ahmad, cross-check the databases for all reports that contain Kasim and Izar Harul. Then come through those reports and see if any common names turn up. Since the three of them are friends, I bet they must have been involved in some altercations together before. We might already have Hawkins on file. We just don't know yet. Can you step out of the vehicle for me? Okay, let's proceed to the pavement. Can I have your driving license, please? Screen. Mohd Kasim B. Abdul Raouf, yes. you are placed under arrest for rioting. Good news. Kasim was caught in the TP roadblock last night. More good news. We have identified Hawkins. He was cited in a report for noise pollution. His real name is Mohd Haikal B. Mohd Isa. His address is in there. Well done, guys. Let's go get our men. Machi. Makcik tahu tak kat mana Haikal bekerja? Tak, dia tak pernah kasih tahu. Bila kali terakhir, Haikal balik rumah? Uh, tiga minggu lepas. Kenapa, eh? Makcik, kami perlu bantuan Haikal dalam satu siasatan. Bila Haikal balik, sila hubungi kami. Baik, baik, baik. Ini name kat saya. Ah, boleh, boleh. Terima kasih, Makcik. Sama, sama, sama. Maybe we should canvas the area around his home. But if he rarely comes home, it means he might not frequent the area around his place. Hello? Yes. Thanks. Good news. I got stranded. So what happened that night after you split from the rest of them? Uh, me, Izaharul and Kasim went to Pacific Fantasy KTV. Then after that, me and Izaharul went to the back alley for smoke. Hey, are you blind? Hey. You can't see me? You're the one who brought me to me, right? What's your problem, dude? Hey, no problem, is it? Huh? It's my friend! Ah. 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 Hey, what are you doing? Hey, let's go, let's go! Ah. Oh. Hey, hey, boy! Hey. 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 case you have just seen, officers from the Criminal Investigation Department and Central Police Division worked tirelessly around the clock, trawling through hours of CCTV footages and interviewing witnesses to ascertain the identity of the suspects and brought them to justice. The offenders were convicted of multiple offences, including rioting and voluntarily causing hurt with common intention. Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Raoum was sentenced to five years, six months imprisonment and nine strokes of the cane. Muhammad Hasli bin Abdul Hamid was sentenced to three years, 10 months imprisonment and 12 strokes of the cane. Muhammad Judan bin Jafar was sentenced to two years, six months imprisonment and six strokes of the cane. Muhammad Hasbi bin Fadila was sentenced to two years, six months imprisonment and six strokes of the cane. Izzah Haru Fadawus bin Abdul Rahim was sentenced to one year, nine months imprisonment and six strokes of the cane. Muhammad Haiko bin Abdullah was sentenced to one year, six months imprisonment and three strokes of the cane. Zafri Arifin bin Zaidi was sentenced to 12 months of reformative training. Rioting is a serious offence. Offenders can be punished with jail terms or even caning. If you witness anything suspicious or illegal, call the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000 or call 999 for urgent police assistance. You can also submit information online via eyewitness at police.gov.sg forward slash eyewitness or through your police and SG application. All information will be kept strictly confidential. In 2019, more than 1,700 cases of loan scam were reported, involving more than 6 million being cheated from the victims. 
In these cases, victims typically receive SMSs or WhatsApp messages offering easy loans. When the victims respond, they will be asked to transfer a sum of money as a deposit before they are entitled to the loans. However, after paying the deposit, the scammer would become uncontactable and no loan would be dispersed to the victim. In another variant, victims would receive PDF documents purportedly from the Ministry of Law and or Monetary Authority of Singapore informing them that they had to pay a deposit sum and 7% GST for the loan amount before the loan can be approved. Victims were deceived into believing that they were corresponding with licensed moneylenders. Similarly, the scammer would become uncontactable after the victims paid the deposit. Remember, licensed moneylenders are not allowed to advertise through SMSs or WhatsApp. Licensed moneylenders will also not ask loan applicants to make any payments before the disbursement of loans. Such messages are usually from unlicensed money lending syndicates who lend money at high interest rates and may even resort to acts of harassment to compel borrowers to make payments. To prevent yourself from becoming a victim of such scams, here are some tips. Ignore messages that offer loans through SMSs or WhatsApp. Block and report the number as spam. Do not share your personal information such as your NRIC, contact number and bank details. Visit the Ministry of Law's Registry of Moneylenders website to check if the company is a licensed moneylender. If you have any information on unlicensed moneylenders, you may call the National Crime Prevention Council's X Along hotline at 1-800-924-5664. For scam-related matters, you may seek advice by calling the NCPC's Anti-Scam Helpline at 1-800-722-6688 or you can go to www.scamalert.sg to find out more about scams. You can help stop scams by joining our Let's Fight Scams movement. Make a pledge and receive the latest scam alerts to share with your loved ones. In 1820, the first police force of 12 men was formed marking his journey towards establishing law and order in Singapore. In the early years, officers were poorly paid, ill-equipped and untrained. Until 1863, policemen had to pay for their uniforms when the lowest ranking policeman was receiving only $5.50 a month. Each set of uniforms cost $3, which was more than half a month's salary at that time. We've come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. I'm DSP Jonathan Ao Yong. Until next time, do your part to prevent, deter, and detect crime.